I greet you all in the comfort of your homes to enjoy the new month of the month of silver, the third month, the third month in the year, in the biblical calendar, the month of silver, the month which is full of blessings for the Pentecost. We know next Sunday on the 16th of May, it is the 50th day of Pentecost from Passover. So we are welcoming you so that we continue with the appointed times of God as it is prescribed in the Bible. Welcome and blessed Sabbath, blessed new moon, as we are going to have two Sabbaths in a row, like the seventh day Sabbath, which is Saturday, and the next day is the day of Pentecost, an anniversary to the day of Pentecost, which was there in the Bible in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. So we will find that that day is a special day in heaven where there is a new meat offering, two wave loaves counted, which is an, a type of the harvest which is going to be done for the 144,000. So you and I cannot afford to miss that day. For that day is the day God is harvesting, is numbering his flock. So be there. Now let, let us go into our subject, which we said, will God now has promised, God promised us that he's going to take the reins in his hand. There is a reason why he is taking the reins into his hands because those that he gave the charge to look after the flock have been unfaithful to his cause let's prove whether he is unfaithful i mean he he has seen that we are unfaithful because the cause was given as we saw in the laudition what he pronounced was we are neither hot nor cold so he has got to make a revival this revival and reformation or reorganization is how he is going to take the reins into his hand. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 34. You'll find just a note on it. Uh, you'll find that he actually promised. There is a reason why he promised to do that. We saw that because of our state, because of our Laodicean state. Now, there is a charge he has given us. He has seen how wrong we are in Ezekiel chapter 34. Uh, why? Let's start from this one. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, mm -hmm. Son of man, right? prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Right? Prophesy and say unto them, mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, right. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. He does not take the reins into his hand because of the lady. But he clearly in that verse says, because of the shepherds. They have taken the flock, but they have not done the job. That's why he takes the reins into his hand. He said, now prophesy to them. What do you say? What do you say? Right? Read, read and finish. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel mm -hmm. that do feed themselves. Mm -hmm. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Now he's saying, where are all these times? Where is the new moon today? What are you doing when you have been appointed as a shepherd and the new moon is there, you have nothing to do with it. Why? Because it's not in your syllabus, it's not in your church policy, but it is in the Bible. It is in the spirit of prophets. So war be unto the shepherd. They're supposed to feed the flock, put the flock in the appointed times. This new moon wasn't even nailed to the cross at all. It's still there in Isaiah chapter 66. It's there in heaven. We are still going to continue keeping it from one moment to another, from one Sabbath to another. But where are the shepherds? Woe unto them. They are not feeding the flock. This is the reason why he has promised to take the reins into his hand. Verse 3, what do they do? What else do they do? Mm -hmm. Ye eat the fat. You eat the fat. I'm ye... not eating the tithe. I'm not taking the tithe from this flock. Why do you take it when you don't feed the flock? This is what God said. He eat the fat. And what do you do? Uh -huh. And he clothed you with wool. And you are also being clothed by their tithe. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
He killed them that are fed. Those that are fed with the doctrine of from God, you disfellowship, right? But you feed not the flock. But you don't feed the flock with what they desire, what they are paying for. You are not. This is what Ezekiel clearly says. Why he has to take the reins into his hand. Now read on. Verse 4. Verse 4, right? The diseased have ye not strengthened. You did not strengthen the diseased. Those who really need you, you don't strengthen. This is what the Bible says about our time and, and what happens. Eh? Neither have Neither. he healed that which was sick. Those who are sick, did you actually heal? Right? Mm -hmm. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Right? Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Those Neither. Have, those which you disfellowship, did you visit them and bring them back? You didn't. And God is saying all this. Don't say anything that you do is not written in black and white. It is written in black and white. And what? Uh -huh. Neither have you sought that which was lost. And those which were lost. So but, many people will tell them, I've been in this church. I've lost, lost my faith. I've no, it has been, it's, no, it's so cold. It's so bad. But it says, you are not doing all this. Many people are backsliding. You are not looking for them who are lost. Right? Uh -huh. But with force and with cruelty mm -hmm. have ye ruled them. You ruled with force and you cr with cruelty. God is saying that. He's, God is really worried about the flock. Uh -huh. And they were scattered mm -hmm. because there is no shepherd. Because and they there is became. No shepherd. They are scattered everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they became meat to mm -hmm. all the beasts of the field right? when they were scattered. What happened to those who, disfe who you disfellowshipped? So many disfellowshipped, disfellowshipped people, where are they? Do you know where they are? But God is saying because of that, this is wrong in his sight. You did not visit them. You just chased anyone who practiced what is in the Bible, you chase out. You chase out. And... You did not follow to say, this is what we want you to do, or this is what... You, you follow to say, come up from the Bible and do what the church policy does. It does say, which is not in biblical. Now, God is saying, this is the reason why you did not follow them. Why? Because they were right. If they were wrong, actually, if they were wrong, you were going to follow them. But because they are right, you did not follow them. Right? Uh -huh. Therefore, in verse 7... Therefore, ye shepherds, mm -hmm. hear the word of the Lord. Right. As I now, live. Now, that's why he is now promising what he is going to say right now. He is promising because these are all the faults he has seen in Laodicea. Now he says, therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Right. As I live, mm -hmm. saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. surely because my flock became a prey mm -hmm. and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, right. because there was no shepherd, right. neither did my shepherds search for my flock, mm -hmm. but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. They chased them. They chased them out of their house. They chased them. After chasing them, they go and sleep and enjoy. And they, don't, they did not do what they are paid for. Right? And what what is going, God going to do? Therefore, mm -hmm. O ye shepherds, right. hear the word of the Lord. Right? Thus saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. Behold, mm -hmm. I am against the shepherds. God says, I'm against you because of that. I am against you because of that. Surely this word, this chapter is not in the Bible by a mistake. Mm -hmm. He is communicating something to someone. Otherwise, it is if it had nothing to do with us, it shouldn't be there. But somebody has to preach it. And what is he going to do? That's and I will require mm -hmm. my flock at their hand. I will. He has written everything in black and white. He says, I want my flock from your hands. Mm -hmm. And cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Mm -hmm. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. He stops everything. So where are we right now? <laughs> We are trying to resuscitate ourselves, going back to church and going to resuscitating. But somehow, you say, we are now heading towards it. Where God is saying, you will never feed my flock Again. anymore. Again. That, that's a, a, a retrenchment or a restructuring. Or what you call <laughs> those who are dissolved. Mm -hmm. And then start again. A reshuffle. Right? And... 
<laughs> for I will deliver my flock now from he their takes mouth. the reins into his hand. Mm -hmm. I will deliver the flock, mm -hmm. deliver my flock from their mouth, mm -hmm. that they may not be met meet for them. Mm -hmm. For thus saith the Lord God, right. Behold, right. I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. He is the one going to do that. All those who are disfellowshipped, all those who are discontented, he is going to search them and reform them and make a revival and reformation. Now let's go back to our topic. It was just a glimpse to see whether the Bible has it. The Bible talks about this reformation or reorganization. Who does it? It's God himself. He's going to reorganize them. Why? He's seen all these faults. Now let's let's uh, let's go to the Gospel Workers, a book by Sister White, G W three zero four point one. Let's hear from point one. Yeah. There is sadness in heaven. S Sister White also confirms it and say there is sadness in heaven. What is it? Why is heaven sad? Right. Mm -hmm. There is sadness in heaven mm -hmm. over the spiritual blindness of many of our brethren. Right. Our younger ministers mm -hmm. who feel less who feel less important positions must make decided efforts to come to the light to sink the shaft deeper and still deeper in the mine of truth. Now he wants to revive and reform, but there's sadness. There are some younger ministers who didn't even know what about A.T. Jones and we're gonna they didn't even know the history, but now he's appealing to them to say they should sink the shaft deeper and still deeper in the mind of truth. They should be knowledgeable. And what? The second paragraph, right? The rebuke of the Lord will Why? rest. Because the rebuke of the Lord will rest, right? Finish. Mm. The rebuke of the Lord will rest upon those who would bar the way. That clear when light. When they join the ministry to their job description, they think they're, they're, they're supposed to be barring the way, interposing between God and the sheep. When God sends the message, they make a bar so that the message doesn't reach the people. Now, read it properly. The rebuke of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The rebuke of the Lord will rest upon those who would bar the way mm -hmm. that clearer light shall not come into the people. You see that we no longer need light. We no longer. You want to bar the way. So that clearer light cannot reach the people. You start stopping people. Watch, don't watch, don't do this. Don't you stay where we are, where we don't feed you. Because God clearly said, My flock is not being fed. My flock is not being fed. So now when God appoints new messengers to feed the flock, he says, These young ministers can shift, they stop. Barring the way so that the word of God goes to the flock. Right? The rebuke of the Lord will rest upon those who would bar the way. That clearer light shall not come to the people. Now we need this clearer light. Where we understand Daniel. Where we understand Revelation. Where we understand the prophecies of the kingdom. The prophets. All these nitty gritties. It should be Deliver the clearer to the people. Stop barring the way. Yeah. Uh -huh. the, uh, a, great a great work mm -hmm. is to be done, and mm -hmm. God sees that our leading men have need of more light. Now there is a great work to be done, but God is watching and says, "These leading men, they need this light. They need it, right?" And mm -hmm. that they may unite with the messengers whom he sends to accomplish the work that he designs shall be done. Now look here. So it means when he was complaining, he appointed new messengers mm. who are bringing clearer light to the people. Now, what is the minister doing? Is not even participating with the messengers. But what is he doing? He is barring the way that the, the light should not reach the people. Because there is great light, God is going to, he has sent his own messengers now. This is how he's going to revive the church. He sends his own messengers. He wants them also to participate. 
But instead, what do they do? They are barring the way so that these messengers cannot reach the people and the message will not. But God says the rebuke of the Lord will rest upon those who would bar the way that clearer light shall not come to the people. A great work is to be done. And God says that our leading men have need of more light. They want more light, which is not in their, in, in their, in their, in their policies. The light should be from the Bible. It's clear, being sent by God by new messengers, right? That they may unite with the messengers whom he sends to accomplish the work that he designs shall be done. So it means God has now appointed new messengers, not those that he was complaining about in Ezekiel 34, but new messengers who now bring clearer light to the church. What was the minister doing? The minister says it is not feeding the flock. This is what we had Ezekiel 34 saying. But he says the ministers also need more light to unite with these messengers to proclaim the same light. Instead of barring the way, they should also combine effort with the messengers so that this message of the sealing of the three seals is, is received by the flock. Right? And mm -hmm. the Lord right? had the Lord has raised up messengers mm -hmm. and endued them with his spirit. Right? You hear what 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 God says through the spirit of prophecy? Mm -hmm. He was complaining, they were not feeding the flock. Now he says, the Lord has raised new messengers and imbued them with his spirit. The Lord has raised up messengers and endured them with his spirit. And he says, what does he say to the messengers? Listen. Cry aloud. Isaiah 58 verse 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. Spare not. Lift up thy voice Lift like a trumpet. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression. This is what he says to the messengers. Now you want to stop them? You want to silence them? They will never be silent. Because the hand from above is commissioning them to cry aloud. Lift your voice like a trumpet. What? And show my people their transgression. Now, you, you have cries coming from people saying, Hey, you talk too much. You blame too much. Hey, someone was saying, Many people are just blaming the church. They're blaming the church. Listen, you are against the word of God, which is saying, Cry aloud. Show them their transgression. God is, God is commissioning that. And you think you can fight that? You can't fight it. You can't fight it. Because it's commissioned from above. Cry out, show the people their transgression. Lift your voice like a trumpet. Tell them where they are wrong. Now, and uh, finish that verse. Mm -hmm. And the house of Jacob, their sins. Yeah. So then say, we will never sing. We will never. God is saying their sins. And he has raised messengers to cry aloud for these sins to stop. Right? And how will, will these sins be stopped? He will make a revival and reformation and carry forward the message with those who agree. And those who don't agree, alas, there is doomsday coming, which is the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. It's coming at the end. Now here, God has commissioned this. Now let's hear, let's hear, let's hear next what We are reading from Gospel Workers, brethren, 304. And now we are on the second paragraph. Now read on, let's see. Okay. This message mm -hmm. will go to the people. And if there were no... I heard that from either. Let no one run the risk. Oh, mm -hmm. let no one mm -hmm. run the risk of interposing. Interposing between the people and the message of heaven. Right. Let no one run the risk of coming between God and the people and stopping the message. And I can see people thinking they are ordained to do that job of interposing between the messages of God and God's people. Don't hear, don't hear. You, you, where do you think you are? Where do you think you are working? And you think you are working in the vineyard? You are just a stumbling block, blocking the messages of God. When they are coming to the people, you go and say, don't listen, don't, you are interposing. Now God is warning that. Let no one run the risk of interposing between the people and the message of heaven. This message comes from heaven. Don't run that risk. 
of going in between the people and the message. Don't run that risk. You have your own sins to contend. Don't run that risk. Right? And mm -hmm, this message. This message will, will go. go to the people. It will. That's one thing you don't know when you say, don't listen. You have actually awakened the people to listen. When you actually say, don't stop, stop listening, stop listening. You are actually waking them up to start listening. Because why? God says this message will go to the people. Whether I like it or not, this message, there are some people who say, don't go into the houses and witness. And listen. We don't need to go to the houses. Just go on Facebook. Nobody wants, nobody wants. And somebody says, oh, we have Facebook prophets. We have Facebook. Where do you think they should be? Where do you think, if they are not in Facebook, where do you think they should be? When the, all the churches are closed, where do you think they should be? You also are there. You, that's one thing, you, one thing you forget, you are also in there. So everyone is there. We have got one platform, all of us. There is no more platform, special platform for somebody special. Everybody in the same platform. Same. If you have no message, just keep your mouth shut. Let those who have a message proclaim the message. You understand? Now here it says, the message will go. It will go. This message will go. Read that one. Mm -hmm. This message will go to the people. Right. And if there were no voice among men to give it, mm -hmm. the very stones would cry out. If there are no stones, don't even run the risk of interposing. Even, even if you shut people up and say, oh, this one, uh, uh, this one if, 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 are quiet, this one are quiet. They will never keep quiet. God will still raise more. God will even raise the stones. If this is the message of the hour, you will never win by blocking it. He will raise even the very walls to start talking. He will, he, God is not destitute of workers. God is... God has in numerous ways to make sure this message goes to the people. So don't work, don't work for nothing. Don't do a, 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 a no job. That's a, that's a rubbish job to interpose between God's messages and the people. You read your own Bible. If you have a message, you proclaim it. So don't run the risk if this message is not okay with you. Leave it. That's one thing with Facebook. If you are bored, just leave. There is a delete button. Just opt off. Those who are, are interested in the message will stay on the message and don't interpose. Just go and start your own message somewhere which you think is right. But this one, God says, is going to go to the people. Whether we like it or not, it is going to go. Whether we shut the people up, you raise more. He raised more. The very mouth which you utter against this message is actually raising somebody to listen. Now, let's hear point three. Mm -hmm. I call. I call upon every minister mm -hmm. to seek the Lord. Right. Now, there's a call also for ministers. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Stop that game. He is calling upon you to seek the Lord. And what? Mm -hmm. I call upon every minister mm -hmm. to seek the Lord. Right. To put away pride and strife for supremacy. Don't be in a habit of strife for supremacy. You know, you are sitting here, you, you walk in there, you want also the top, the, the top chair. No, stay at the back there and listen. Listen also seek the Lord. He is calling upon every minister to seek the Lord, to put, on, put away pride and strive for supremacy. You think everything that you say is the correct thing, but this, the Bible is proving you wrong. The spirit of prophecy is proving you wrong. Now, read on. Uh -huh. God, I mean, supremacy, and then... And to humble the heart before God. Right. It is the coldness of heart, mm -hmm. the unbelief of those who ought to have faith, right. that keeps the churches in feebleness. What is keeping the churches in, in feebleness, Right. It is the coldness of the heart, the unbelief of those who ought to have faith. You look upon somebody who, walking with Bible and spirit of prophecy and, and uttering nothing after having all those things. You know why? Because the heart is cold. The heart is cold, and this is what keeps the church 
in feebleness. But what is the consciousness? You think you are, you are the only one who knows everything when you know nothing. Now here, uh, let's hear another exposition from Sister White. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 217. First paragraph. Now, let's hear. Mm -hmm. I am filled with sadness. You see, everywhere is sadness. We, we, the, the other one started to say, heaven, there is sadness in heaven. When you started Gospel, Gospel Workers 304, first paragraph, it started with, there is sadness in heaven. Now, this one also, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 217, first paragraph. It starts also with sadness. There is sadness. The whole heaven is sad. The whole heaven. And yet, what are we saying? We're glorifying our names and saying, we are not going to sink. We will be there. We are ready to walk in. Now, but the whole heaven has only three letters. S-A-D. Sad. About us. Sad. Now, here I'm filled with sadness. That's Sister White. <laughs> I am filled with sadness mm -hmm. when I think of our condition as a people. When it, she, she just looked before she died and said, Oh, after they had rejected 1888, what was the result? Sadness to the prophet who was working. At that time, she was sad. Why? Because there is a feebleness in the spiritual condition. Now, read on. Uh -huh. The Lord, the Lord mm -hmm. has not closed heaven to us, mm -hmm. but our own course of continual backsliding has separated us from God. Mm -hmm. What is there? What is there? Uh -huh. Pride. Pride. Covetousness, covetousness and love of the world. And love of the world. Have lived in the heart without this fear. This is what she observed. We are saying, we are looking for why, the reasons why God has to take the reins into his hand. The prophet of, actually was shown, was shown this condition, that there was pride, that there was covetousness, and there was love of the world. Which one is love of the world? If you are against God's his feast, and you are more prone to pack and feast, <laughs> you are worldly. You are worldly. Because the world is glorying in those pack and feast. You are worldly. And the church has got all these mother's days. Father's days, Christmas, everything that the world has. And Sister White was complaining about that sadness. There was sadness in her heart about all this worldliness, which is hovering everywhere, from top to bottom. You find a top person saying, Bless Mother's Day. I want my mother. Why particularly on a park and day? Why on a park and day do you want your mother to be happy? Why? You want your, happy, your, your, your lover to be happy on a valentine? Why on a, on, a, on, a, on a park and day? Why do you want to emphasize the park and And then those days which are chronicled in black and white in the Bible, you, you turn your back and say they were not nailed to the cross. You know what? Heaven is sad. Heaven is sad. Now here it says, pride, covetousness, love of the world. Have, have lived, lived in the heart. Without fear of banishment or condemnation. Right? What else is there? Grievous and presumptuous sins mm -hmm. have dwelt among us. Right? And yet the general opinion mm -hmm. is that the church is flourishing and the peace and spiritual prosperity are in all her borders. This is what we think. There is spiritual prosperity. But what is there in our heart? Grievous and presumptuous sins. Grievous and presumptuous. You know, God likes a sinner who sins but not knowing that this was sin. But presumptuous is somebody who knows now I'm about to sin and goes ahead to sin. This is the grievous sin ever. Heaven can witness. Mm. And this is what God is witnessing. People who know that this is wrong but they still continue to do it when they know it is wrong. This is presumptuous sin. Now, uh, let's hear. Let's hear more on the second paragraph. The church. The church has turned back from following Christ, her leader, uh -huh. and is steadily retreating toward Egypt. Really? Hmm. So that's worldliness. That's Sister White saw that in in 1882. That was written. She saw it. 
and wrote it in testimonies for the church. Volume 5, page 217, third, second paragraph. Now, the church has turned back from following Christ as leader. We are looking, brethren, for the reason why God promises to take the reins into his hand. Why? Why all of a sudden when we are recording millions and billions of people who are keeping Sabbath, but he says, I'll take the reins into my hand. What is it all? What is this that's giving us billions of people who are not being led, who are not being fed? And God is saying, I'm going to lead my flock. The, his particular flock, the flock of God, he will lead it. You can lead the rest who are not God's flock. But God's flock, he will lead it. The wheat will be led by God, but not the tares. The tares you can have as many as you want, bulky as bulky as you want. Um, read on. Let, yet, yet few are alarmed. And when it has left Christ the leader, he says, only few are alarmed. A few will say, mm, where are we going? Mm. What is this? A few are alarmed. The rest are on, on with it. Powerful. When they have left Christ, the leader. Right? Mm -hmm. Yet few are alarmed. Right? Or astonished at mm -hmm. their want of spiritual power. Right? Doubt, doubt. And even disbelief. See what has made them stop following Christ? Doubt. And a what? And even disbelief. Right? Of the testimonies of the Spirit of God. You, you hear them say, I want the Bible, I don't want the testimony. Because they have doubt and disbelief. Because the spirit of prophecy is talking against them. That's why they don't want the spirit of prophecy. So it's doubt and disbelief of the spirit of God is leavening the church. Is it? The bulk of them, Sister White, they say, Sister White was our last prophet, and yet they're still eating meat. Have you heard them? Yes, they are. And whatever Sister White is, is warned against, they are not taking heed of it. And they tell you that we have our prophet. Our prophet was Sister White. And they look at their tables. They are full. They are full of what Sister White condemned. They are full. Now, doubt and disbelief of the testimonies of the Spirit of God is living in the whole church. This is what we are hearing from the Spirit of God. You don't need, brethren, you don't need to go and witness for yourself and, and find out no, you just need to read from what is chronicled by God for us to know what is happening. Now, um, read on this here. Mm -hmm. Doubt uh -huh. and even disbelief of the testimonies of the Spirit of God mm -hmm. is leavening our churches mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Satan would have it thus. Mm -hmm. Ministers who preach self instead of Christ what do they would preach? have it thus. What do they preach? They say they preach self instead of preaching Christ. Yeah? Stories and fables and all this work. Just to uplift self, but not uplifting Christ. Now here, what happens? <laughs> the testimonies are, are the testimonies are unread the and testimonies unappreciated. Are unread and unappreciated. Now you know what? You make an argument with anyone. You hear them only demanding scriptures. Demanding show me where you get that. Even when you show them where it is. They don't appreciate that we have shown them. Testimonies are unread. They don't even know where to get the testimonies or anything that they practice. They can't support with the scripture. They don't know. They only follow tradition. Tradition to tradition to tradition. They can't prove nothing. This is what the Bible says. The Spirit of Prophet says testimonies are not read. They have no testimonies. They have the bulks of books from Sister White with they have not ever opened. They, they are unread. Testimonies are unread. And they are, whether you, you give them the testimony, when they say, show us where it is written, you give them. It's so foreign to them and so strange. This is what happens here. Now read on. Uh -huh. Testimonies are unread. <laughs> The testimonies mm -hmm. are unread and right. appreciated. Right. God has spoken to you. Mm -hmm. Light has been shining from his word and from the testimonies. Mm -hmm. And both have been slighted and disregarded. Right. You give the testimony. They say, no, that's the spirit of prophet. That's sister. Right. Give me from the Bible. They are unappreciated. God is saying all that. 
That's why he says, I'll take the reins into my hand. I'm now taking the reins into my hand. Now, uh -huh. The result is apparent mm -hmm. in the lack of purity and devotion and earnest faith among us. What comes out of all that attitude? Lack of purity. Lack of interest in worship. Nothing is interesting. That's why many backslide. Now, let's hear the question. Mm -hmm. Let let each put the question to his own heart. Right? How have we fallen into this state of spiritual How feebleness have we and dissension? Into this state of spiritual feebleness and dissension. and dissension. How have we fallen into such a spirit? And what? Have we not brought upon ourselves the frown of God because our actions do not correspond with our faith? Right. So, what is our admonition then? The spirit, let's, let's, let's go to uh, five, uh, 50 page 8 today. The spirit of prophecy declares. The spirit of prophecy declares that mm -hmm. only those who right. have withstood and overcome temptation in the strength of the mighty one right. will be permitted to act a part in proclaiming this only message. Only that those who cry aloud, only those who will sigh and cry, whether people stop them, they will resist this and continue. These are the people. God is going to take. God will use these ones in the loud cry because they prove themselves faithful to cry aloud all these sins that we have listed. Those who have done so are the ones who will be selected to cry on the loud cry. Now, here, no, this, this was from Review and Herald, November 19, 1908, right? The spirit of prophecy declares mm -hmm. that only those who have withstood and overcome temptation mm -hmm. in the strength of the mighty one will be permitted to act a part in proclaiming this message when it shall have when it shall have swelled into the loud cry. Only those who have proved themselves that they did not go with the tide which was against God, with the tide which had left Christ. A leader with the tide, and you are telling me that it's never going to sink when the spirit of prophecy is telling you clearly it's left Christ a leader. And you are telling me, you know, you will never fool those who read, they read and understand and know exactly that you are fooling yourself because God has clearly wrote through the spirit of prophecy that they've left Christ and steadily retreating back to worldliness, right? Uh -huh. This. This excerpt mm -hmm. bears plain evidence that we are not now in the time of the loud cry. Right. Neither have we ever been. Mm -hmm. For the loud cry is to be proclaimed only by those who have overcome temptation. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. the message has been mm -hmm. and is now proclaimed by both sanctified and unsanctified ministers. Now, what we have now is sanctified and unsanctified ministers proclaiming. So we are not in the loud cry. The loud cry will be only those who are sanctified. So this loud cry is still future to us. But we are ready to hope in the cloud. So yet the loud cry will be only a ministry which is pure and holy and sanctified ministers. But here we still come good. And then, therefore. Therefore, mm -hmm. if the message in the time of the law, oh, sorry, in the time of the loud cry is to be proclaimed only by those who have overcome temptation. Mm -hmm. There must necessarily be a reformation, and it shall sift out all the unsanctified ministers. Right. So, 4 SC 10, 12, 4, 9, what is it that we are talking about? The reformation, the revival and reformation, right? The more sure way, what is it? The more sure word mm -hmm. of prophecy mm -hmm. through the gospel prophet right. throws great light on the subject. The only thing that will lead a revival and reformation is the sure word through a prophet. Through a gospel prophet. Do we have the prophet in the church? Do we? Do we? Let's go. Let's spin back, back at the bottom and you'll find there's a quotation I've written in the New Estate. And let's, let's, let's ponder about this quotation. It's GTI 12.2. Uh, you know, 
People are partially thinking there is, and some say there is no. But do we have, in our time, do we have a gospel prophet? If we don't, then let's pack our bags. We are doing nothing. Because the revival and reformation will only be carried by a gospel prophet. That's how God will take the reins into his hand. Now let's hear. Let's hear from that in court alone. A GTI. Mm -hmm. 12.2. 12.2, right? In God, the New Estate, yeah. God hath set some in the church, first apostles, what? secondarily prophets, mm -hmm. thirdly teachers, mm -hmm. after that miracles, then gifts of healing. Are these gifts in the church? Listen to the next sentence. Let it be born, let it be born in mind that all these are set in the church by God himself. Are they there in the church? Are, they, are the prophets there in the church? And the Spirit of Prophet says, let it be born in mind that all these are set in the church by God himself. Do we have apostles in the church? Do we have prophets in the church? Thirdly, do we have teachers in the church? And do we have pastors in the church? The, the Spirit of Prophecy says, let it be born in mind that all these are set in the church by God himself. Now, God himself has set them in the church. That's the, I mean, for us to believe that there's going to be a revival and reformation, first we should know it should be led by a prophet. But we are being told these gifts were set by God in the church. If the gift of the pastor is still there, so the gift of the prophet is there. But why can't we see the prophet? Why can't we see the apostles? Why can't we, know, you know, we should ponder into that question and find it from the spirit of prophets whether it is proving to us we have. Now let's read on, read on. It is impossible. No, no other. No can other it. can do it. Mm -hmm. It is impossible for men to make a true apostle or prophet. It is impossible for men to sit down to ordain a prophet. Is it true? Is it possible to sit down and appoint a, an apostle and a prophet? Those two gifts, no, for sure, they don't come from men. It is impossible. You can sit down and appoint teachers and appoint pastors. Yeah, they are all appointed by a vote. Yes, they are voted. People who, who say you can be a pastor. Yeah, and let's ordain. And then they ordain after people have made a vote. Yeah, but you can't do that with a prophet. You can't do that with a prophet. And you can't do that with the apostle. Those are the two superior gifts. You cannot do that. Now, let's hear. No other can do it. This is what we have heard from the Spirit of Prophecy, right? It is impossible. It is impossible for men to make a true apostle or prophet. Right. There are certain people in the world who say to others, why do you not have apostles and prophets? There are people who ask, why don't you have apostles and prophets? Isn't it people have been asking us those questions, right? Let's hear. Ignoring the fact that God has, has them in his church until this day. Until today, 2021, God has them in the church. Huh? You want the spirit of prophets to tell us, yes, they are there in the church today. <laughs> now, let's hear. Mm -hmm. Igno ignoring the fact that God has set them in his church until this day. Right. Although they are often unrecognized. Although they are often completely unrecognized. Even as the apostleship of Paul and the others were often denied. The apostleship of Paul and the others and the disciples were all denied. Do you see why we do not know there is a prophet in the church? It's because the these posts are not ordained by men. One. Two, they are unrecognized. And when they are recognized, they are denied. Did we hear those three things? Even as Paul and other disciples were denied. 
So how how will the, the simple the simple person how will that simple person discern that there is a prophet? How will they if the leaders don't? The pastors, the ministers, they don't recognize there is. But the spirit of prophet say those gifts are there in the church today. Why can't we see them? Because they are unrecognized. Now read one, let's hear. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Then, then mm -hmm. there are some combinations of people who claim to have all these among them. There are some combinations of people who claim that we have we have prophets. We have had people saying, "Now oh, we have got prophets, so and so, prophets." So. There are combinations of people who claim they there is prophet so and so here. There is prophet so and so. Yeah, we have heard that. Uh huh. Reading. The, the, then there are some combinations of people who claim to have all these among them. Right. Reading that God has set them in the church. Mm -hmm. They see that the true church of God ought to have apostles, prophets, etc. They see that the true church of God. Then we have read other churches claiming mm. apostle or prophet, so and so. They don't even talk about pastors. They talk about apostles and prophets. Why? Because they say that the true church, if you claim you are a true church, you should be having them. Yeah. But they say that the true church is not claiming to have one. So they they have theirs. This is what they do. Outside there, they have their apostles. Outside there, they have their prophets. Why? Because they say that the person who says this is the true church of God has none. There's none, no prophet. No? <laughs> right? Read on. Uh, accordingly, mm -hmm. they appoint some to be apostles. No, the uh, fact is. The fact is, mm -hmm. however, mm -hmm. that oh, you this... Know, I, I'm, I'm the one who disturbed you. Start from what it says, accordingly. Right. Let's start from there. Yeah. Then there are some combinations of people who mm -hmm. claim to have all these among them. Mm -hmm. Reading that God has set them in the church, they see that the true church of God ought to be, ought to have apostles and prophets. Right. Accordingly, they appoint some to be apostles, Accordingly. others to be prophets, yeah. and others to be teachers. Right. And then they point to these as evidence that they are the right. true church of God. If they see the true church not having, not even claiming any apostle, no, no prophet, what they do outside there, they now make the designation themselves and then say, this is their prophet, this is the apostle, this is the teacher, this is the evangelist, because the true church has none, has none. So what are we doing? We are only seeing those gifts, uh, people acting the gifts that we should be having outside there, eh? so that they prove to us we are wrong because we are not claiming them. Why? Because they know if we are the true church of God, we should be having them. So what they do is they play house outside so that you see what you are lacking. Right? Read on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the fact is, mm -hmm. however, that this is the strongest possible proof that they are not the church of God. Right? If they were the church of God, apostles and prophets would be set among them by God himself. Right? But the fact that they themselves are obliged to make apostles and prophets mm -hmm. shows that they have none in fact. Right? They are simply setting up a dummy to hide the absence of the reality. Right. What but the, are they doing out there? They are setting a dummy. A dummy to hide a the dummy, absence. A, it, a dummy is like when you have a dummy, like a phone, which is a dummy. It does not really act as a phone. But it has all the things like a phone that you can even think is a phone. So what they have done outside, they, they set a dummy to show what you are lacking. What, what is that dummy doing? is doing exactly what the phone should be doing. But the phone is claiming to have no network. Mm. So the dummy pretends to have a, a network, so that shows you what you don't have. Because if you have no prophet, you have no network. Network to God, you have no, not, you have no communication. So the dummy 
shows a phone without a network and says and pretends to be phoning to show that the phone actually, which is true, should have a network, should be in contact with God and to be together with God. But they are now also saying Mother's Day. And the true church is also saying Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine, and the true church Valentine, and they say Christmas, and the true church say Christmas. Why? <laughs> because God is saying the whole heaven is sad. Mm. Is sad. And sister, I say, I'm sad. How did we come to this condition? Now let's hear more. Mm -hmm. They are simply setting up a dummy mm -hmm. to hide the absence of, of reality. reality. Right? But the presence of the Shem only emphasizes the absence of the real. What is this, the Shem? Yeah, we have been hearing of Shem marriages. People who pretend to be married when they are not, so that they do something that they are aiming for. Right? But here we have Shem prophets, Shem apostles, who are actually showing whoever is claiming to be the true church that you are absent of what is real. The absence of the prophet, the absence of the apostle is being shown by dummies to show that you are lacking this. If you are true. So they all laugh and say, they say they are true church. They say they are true church of God. They don't have apostles. They don't have prophets. They only have pastors. They laugh out loud. Did you hear? Now, uh, let's go back to the second paragraph. We have got a long study, and we'll finish it on Sabbath, of how God will take the reins into his hand. It's a long study. You and I, we, we are obliged to know the history and to keep, because now we are dwelling on Laodicea. Why does God promise us a revival and reformation. When, when we have everything set to think that we are now almost in the pearly gates and God is talking of a revival and reformation. God is inspiring the spirit of prophets and say, I'm sad. The whole heaven is sad. And the, the whole setup went berserk. The whole setup is wrong. The whole setup, I have to take the reins into my hands and reorganize. The whole reorganization which was done by Sister White is going to be Zach. Why? He has got testimonies, volume 5, that he is going to use a pure and true ministry. Not those we have been trained by literal institutions, but he will train himself. He will take the reins himself. Now, he has promised all that. We, we shouldn't read it in whispered tones. Why? Why whisper? We have to read it, cry aloud. Isaiah 58, verse 1 says, cry aloud. Spare not. Show my people their transgressions. This is what we have to do so that we are picked for the loud cry as well. And we are saved. Mm. Right? So let's go to the paragraph where, where, where which you are reading. The next one. Which one are you looking at now? Because we are, we, we are to divert to, to see the revival will be done by a prophet. This is the most sure word of prophecy. Mm. Is the gospel prophet. So the very first thing when God takes the land, people are expecting to see God coming, walking there, saying, I've come to take the reins into his hand. No, he's not going to do that. He works through a prophet. Now we have been told by 4 SC 10, 12.4, uh, it says, the more sure word of prophecy through the gospel prophet throws great light on the subject we read. Right. Now let's hear. And then we have been promised there that a revival in the Christ, uh, our righteousness, page 154. We read it the previous, it, 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 just read it through, right? A revival and reformation mm -hmm. must take place under the ministration of the Holy Spirit. Now we understand the way it says under the ministration of the Holy Spirit. It's under the ministration of the prophet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Revival and reformation are two different things. Mm -hmm. Revival signifies a renewal of spiritual life, a quickening of the powers of mind and heart. Right. So you see why people were sleeping. Why? Because they did not have a prophet. They did not recognize. They had a prophet, but was silenced. The prophet was being silenced 
style and taken off this fellowship to doing everything so that people don't hear nothing from them. Now, the revival and reformation, the first thing is to revive or to quicken people. The spiritual senses are quickened. They wake up. Why? Because it's being conducted by a prophet. And then next, what do we have on the revival? What do you have next? Reformation, right? A reformation? Reformation mm -hmm. signifies a reorganization, right. a change in ideas and right. theories, right. habits and practices. So we have to change everything. We are seeing people selling into something else which is not in the Bible. That people are concentrating on things that are not in the Bible. And we have seen, we, have, we don't even need to name them. We name all these practices that we are seeing. But here we will change the practices, the ideas the theories, the habits. And this has to change under the ministration of the prophet. Now read on. Uh -huh. Reformation. Reformation mm -hmm. signifies a reorganization, mm -hmm. a change in ideas and theories, habits mm -hmm. and practices. Right. Reformation will not bring forth the good fruit of righteousness unless it is connected with the revival of the spirit. Unless the reformation is connected to a prophet or to a revival of the spirit. Revival of the spirit meaning send a revival or send another prophet. For the previous one died in 1915. God send a revival. God send another prophet. This is what we have been told. GTI told us straight, up, straight away that the prophet had been sent by church, by God himself in the church. And nobody votes for them. That's the problem. That's why they are not discerned. Why? Nobody votes for them. They are unidentified. Whereas a minister coming from any institute is introduced. This is pastor has been three years or has been five years there and he has learned these doctrines, this the PhD, this degree, and then people recognize them straight away. But the prophet is not recognized, is trained by God somewhere. Like Moses. Now let's hear, let, let, let's hear exactly, exactly, um, let's go down, if you scroll down, you find where, where, where we, we find, I want to jump and see, and see some examples that are there, right? Um, God there says, taking the reins into his hand, the work not circumscribed. Right. Have you found it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The work mm -hmm. not circumscribed mm -hmm. by the counsel of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, that the Lord might guide you. Mm -hmm. You should never in a single instance allow hearsay to move you to action. Mm -hmm. And yet you have sometimes done this. Mm -hmm. Never take action to narrow and circumscribe the work unless you, unless you know that you are moved to do so. By the Spirit of the Lord. Right. Now, let's go to 4C, 4SC 10, 12, 5.6. Okay. This is what I, I'm, I'm looking for. As most of the people hardly... As most of the people... Sorry. As most of our people mm. hardly understand what the Spirit of prophecy means by the statement, the Lord shall take the reins in His hands. Right. Most people hardly understand what the spirit of prophecy means by the statement, God will take the reins in his hand. When we saw it, the first thing he revives. How does he revive? By a gospel prophet. And the next thing he reorganizes. This is what he did in 1844. When he took the work from William Miller, he revived by giving them a prophet. Sister White. And then after reviving by giving a prophet, he organized. He reorganized. That's what he does. There is no way you will take the prophet and use the prophet after he has complained of all these things that are wrong and use the prophet there. He will use the prophet. That's why in Revelation chapter 12 we see after the, 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 the water had been swallowed, which was coming from the dragon. If you read Revelation chapter 12. The next thing we saw is the woman 
And he has said, the dragon was wroth with that woman and he has said, who were keeping the commandments and have a prophet. So what was happening? When the water was swallowed, which is the slot of Ezekiel 9, next thing, we found the remnant were being led by a prophet. So when this, this prophet start leading these people, when the letter rain started, the letter rain, we saw, it comes as bright clouds first, and then next the rain, and then, so the bright clouds are the letter rain of doctrine first, and then which, who was conducting those doctrines? It was the prophet. And next we find the 144,000 are led by a prophet. Now let's hear, as most of our people hardly understand what the spirit of prophet means by the term the Lord shall take the reins in his hand. And that we found we find in testimonies, page 300. It's there above there, that paragraph, that long paragraph. You can see that. Yeah. Did you see it? The TM 299. Yeah. Start in the middle because it's too long. All right. Start where it says, um, our people, in the middle there, our people... Our people. No, no, no. In, in, where it says, um, we should make efforts to show our people that's what they want. Yeah. Have you seen it? We should make efforts to show our people the mm -hmm. wants of the the wants of the cause of God. Right. And to open before them mm -hmm. the need of using means that God has entrusted to them mm -hmm. to advance the work of the master both at home and abroad. Right. Unless those who can help in are aroused to a sense of their duty, mm -hmm. they will not recognize the work of God when the loud cry of the third angel shall be heard. Right. So the loud cry of the third angel, unless those who... who uh, repeat that sentence. Unless repeat. those who can help in... Mm -hmm are aroused to a sense of their duty. Right. They will not recognize the work of God when the loud cry of the third angel shall be heard. We heard in the middle there when we started that in gospel, gospel workers, he was, God was inviting even the ministers to join in the messengers that he has sent with a message to revive the church. Unless they join in, they won't recognize that this work is now going. Right? And what? Mm -hmm. What will they do? When light goes forth to mm -hmm. lighten the earth, right? instead of coming out, coming up to help, to the help of the Lord, right? they will want to bind about his work to meet their narrow ideas. Now, what do they do when the messengers are preaching? They now bring about confusion. They want to bind about the work that they are not even involved. The work, which work? When they preach at their feast, they are saying they are not feast. When they preach upon Lord's Supper, on which death it should be taken, they say no, what time? They now start binding about, instead of recognizing that it's a work of revival and reformation. Now read on this here. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. That the Lord will work in this last work in a manner very much out of the common order of things. Now, how does he work then in these last days? He does not work in the way that you are used to in the Laodicean church. He now works differently when he takes the reins into his hand. He works in a way that was not there in the Laodicean church. Now, that's why he says, let me tell you that the Lord will work in this last work in a manner very much out of common order of things. What is out of common order of things? And people would be telling you that women should not be ordained, but he comes out of order and ordains them. They will tell you that this is not supposed to be done this way. We are no longer keeping the... But God works in a way which is not in common with what... The, you know, they are used to seeing leaders, pastors leading. But he comes now with prophets leading. Did you hear? In a way which is out of the common order. 
When people are used to seeing the black suits up there and the white collars, but he comes with something different. Did you hear that? This is what he has promised. He will work in a way which is out of the common order. You should know for sure there is something that we are not used to. That he works, he works in a way different. What are we used to? We are used to ministers conducting Lord's Supper. But he comes in a way out of common order. He says the Lord's Supper should be taken in your homes. Mm -hmm. And even with the children. We are used to having Lord's Supper without children. And without even visitors or strangers who are not baptized. But he comes in a way out of the common order. Now let's hear. Mm -hmm. Right? There will be those. Right? That there will be those among us, among us right? who will always want to control the work of God, to dictate even what movements shall be made when the work goes forward under the direction of the angel who joins the third angel in the message to be given to the world. So this angel is not the third angel. It's not Sister White here. But it is another angel coming to join the third angel. So, meaning, when the prophet comes to us, to, when God takes the reins into his hand, the prophet is also on preaching another angel's message, coming to join the third angel's message. Sister White preached the message from the third angel, but here we have another angel's message coming to join the third angel. So, we have a prophet bringing the revival and reformation coming to join the angel who was with sister white now this is a different angel now read on let's hear mm -hmm. right god will god use, will use uh -huh. ways and means right. by which it will be seen that he is taking the reins in his own hands the way he will use is out of order out of the common order what we are used to is different but he will use ways and means that it will be seen that he has now taken the reins into his hand. He will take the reins in, in a way which we don't approve. In a way which we, we, found, we find out of the common order of the things. But that way will be seen that he has taken the reins into his hand now. Did you hear that? Those who, are, who think they are knowledgeable, they know how things should work out, they know how things should, you know, how people who are used by God should look like will fail in that day because it will be out of the common order of what we think should be done. Right? And, mm -hmm. right? God will use ways. Mm -hmm. God will use ways mm -hmm. and means mm -hmm. by which it will be seen that he is taking the reins in his own hands. Right? The workers right? will be surprised Even by the, the simple themselves. means. <laughs> the workers themselves, those who have joined the fourth angel or the fifth angel, they will also be surprised at how God will use them. So nobody will know. Nobody will say, I know how God is going to use us. And I know which, which gender he's going to use. And I know the, what activity will look like. But even this, the workers themselves will also be surprised. Now repeat that one. Mm -hmm. The workers will be surprised mm -hmm. by the simple means that he will use to bring about the perfect, to, to bring about and perfect his work of righteousness. Right. Those who are accounted good workers will need to draw nigh to God. Right? They will need the divine touch. You will need the divine touch when God has taken the reins into his hands. You want to work in the order which is in your church policy. You want to work in the order which you have gazetted. You know, let me tell you one thing. There will be no armor. There will be no dockers. There will be no... What do you call them? Pathfinder. There will be whatever you know, it won't be there. He will work in an order which is out of the common. Did you hear that? That will, whatever you are used to, said you find something new. This is what you should be expecting. 
Now here, let's read on. Uh -huh. They will need to drink more deeply and continuously at the, the fountain, fountain of, of living, living water. water in order that they may discern God's word if at you every want point. To discern the work you need to drink. Mm. They will need to drink more deeply and continuously at the fountain of living water. Did you hear that? So it means if you are not spiritual, you will never descend that way until it swells into a loud cry. You will never drink. You, if you are not drinking from the living fountain, you will never understand the work that God is going to proclaim in the loud cry. And then he says, in order, listen, in order. Mm -hmm. In order that, that they, they may discern God's work. In order that they may discern God's work at in every point. At every point. At every point. Right? And workers... Workers mm -hmm. may make mistakes, mm -hmm. but you should give them a chance to correct their errors. Yeah, we give have them. workers. Some of the workers that God is choosing for the last day, they, they have mistakes that we see. They make them. But they have errors. Serious errors that we require. Is that so and so? We heard about this so and so. It's been doing this and that. They have those errors. They have. But they should be give, should give them a chance to correct their errors. Give them an opportunity to learn caution by leaving the work in their hands. Leave the work with them. Don't disfellowship. Don't take them out. Correct their errors, but let them continue. Don't take the work from their hands. But God is talking to us, brethren. He's saying, this is what he does when he takes the reins into his hand. No one, no one will understand. He will use a prophet. Now, let's hear from, from GC 10, next one. Mm. The foregoing prophetic statement. The foregoing prophetic statement mm -hmm. reveals two definite, definite things. things. What are these? First, mm -hmm. that the Lord is not now holding the reins in his own hands. Right. And second, that at some time he will do so. Right. So we have understood two points. He is not taking the reins right now. Wherever we were with Lord this year, it was something else. Yes, we, we learned about it. Where were we? We will see where we were, right? Go, go further. Mm -hmm. First, mm -hmm. that the Lord is not now holding the reins in his own in own hands. So in and Lord this year, he was not holding the hands. Mm -hmm. He was he was not in front of us. We heard clearly from five T, page two seventeen, that the church left Christ a leader in eighteen eighty two. Left. That's why he said eighty Jones eighteen eighty eight. But it actually didn't accept them. So it means it was left out without Christ, right? So it, the foregoing statements prove that he was not there, right? Mm -hmm. Second, right? that at some time he will do so. Right? That is, mm -hmm. as God is not now ruling the denomination through its present organization, he must reorganize. Why would he reorganize when the organization was okay? He promised a revival and reformation, which is a reorganization, mm. right? And what? Mm. Moreover, Moreover, it is stated that God will do this by means so simple that simple even means. the workers will be surprised. Even the workers will be surprised by the simple means. That we is. It in Testimonies for the Church 2, 299. I mean, Testimonies to Ministers 299. We have just been reading it. Now, uh -huh. That is, mm -hmm. he is not. That is, he mm -hmm. is not going to start re reorganizing the denomination by something great, no, something complicated, no, or something which the world will cause wonderful, no, but, but rather what? by humble means, humble means, quietly, quietly, slowly, slowly, steadily, steadily, and as naturally as represented by the mustard seed. In Matthew 13, verse 31. He said he's going to start taking the reins into his hand by Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. Something that that is, moreover, it is stated that God will do this by...
by means is so simple. What are the means? Means is the prophet. That's the simple means. What, when it is simple means, it will be a humble. Humble. Which is humble? Humble. Men or, or females are humble. Who, who is humble there? Now, I don't know. You have come up with something humble. You will know. The Spirit will tell you what it means. Now, it says something humble, yeah, that he is not going to start reorganizing the denomination by something great. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Great is the man. If a man comes and says, no, I mean, you know, they have started. Every church is there. Most of them, the bulk of them, are, were started by men. But this time, he will confuse you. You will be out of the common order of what you think. But it says it starts with humble beginning. Humble. Something not even great. He said something, something complicated. <laughs> eh, or something. You, you want to start with something complicated or something great or something which the world calls wonderful. No. But rather by humble means, quietly, slowly. <coughs> Steadily and as naturally as represented by the mustard seed. Something tiny that no one can recognize. And also, read on, and also as the, and un also, uh -huh. as the unnoticeable lump right? of leaven right? working in dough. Right. Whereas we saw the leaven <laughs> in 20, 13, verse 33. The leaven was, was by, was taken into the in the, the vessel by a woman, the living is uh, oh, read it, Matthew 13, verse 33. Something working as dough, which is the gospel, right? 13, verse 31. Another parable mm -hmm. put he forth unto them, right? Saying, mm. The kingdom of heaven is mm. like to a grain of mustard seed, right? Which a man took and mm. sowed in his field. Mm -hmm. Which indeed is the least of all seeds. Is the least of anything that you can think can be the one that God is using. Mm. Did you hear that? Uh -huh. But when it is grown. But, the, but when the work comes up. It is the greatest among it is herbs. the greatest among all the trees. And becometh a tree. This so that the birds of the air yeah. come and lodge in the branches this thereof. This is how he is starting to take the reins into his hand. He talks with something unnoticeable. Now, verse 33. Another parable spake Another parable he unto there. them. Yes. The kingdom mm. of heaven mm -hmm. is like unto leaven, right? which a man, which a woman took right. the and hid in three measures and of meal three seals. till the whole, to the whole was leavened. Three seals in any writing, page 15. God knew Joseph and a woman took that living with three measures. Now, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Now, let's go back here. It says, whereas the workers will still want to control the work. Now, listen. Uh -huh. And also, and, and also, also as, the as the unnoticeable lamp of living working in dough, Whereas the mm -hmm. workers will still want to control the work, mm -hmm. but they will lose out as grass is choked by the wheat. Right. How will they lose out as grass is choked, choked. by the wheat? You know, when the wheat is starting, it's a tiny thing. Yeah. And the grass is too tall. And then that tiny thing is surpassed by the wheat. I mean, the, the, the tiny wheat surpasses the grass. Becomes food. Now let's hear here. Yeah. Um, for for SC ten, as God take, taking the reins, as God's taking the reins mm -hmm. in His own hands mm -hmm. has been demonstrated in times past. None need remain ignorant of the method He will now employ to perfect His work mm -hmm. of righteousness. Now, nor now, the system yeah. He will use to rule over His own. What system is He going to use to rule over His flock? What system is he going to start to take over the revival and reformation? None need to guess. It's clear from the scriptures. Now, in the days? In the days when Pharaoh reigned over God's people. You remember? It's taken us back to the days when Pharaoh was reigning over the people. Uh -huh. 
the Lord did not send a great army led by a general trained in the school of the world right. to set them free mm -hmm. and to give him a chance to rule over them. Mm -hmm. But he sent Moses the simple means. Right. So what does simple means mean? Moses. Moses or the prophet. Yeah. So God chose the simple means which was Moses. Now it needed, he says, in the days when Pharaoh reigned over God's people, the Lord did not send a great army mm -hmm. to liberate the Israelites. He did not send. He sent a, a headsman, somebody who was heading cattle. Very simple. Something that you cannot guess. That's what God used to liberate the army, the, I mean the, the, the house of Israel out of Egypt. He used somebody, he took somebody from the bush there who was heading cattle. Moses wasn't picked when he was having degrees in, in Pharaoh's and No, when he was as humble as anything out there, this is what he used, a simple means. Now, that's why he says, the Lord will use simple means that you will never know that he has taken the reins into his hand. Now, read one. Uh -huh. Right? In the days when Pharaoh reigned over God's people, mm -hmm. the Lord did not send a great army mm -hmm. led by a general trained in the school of the world mm -hmm. to set them free mm -hmm. and to give him a chance to rule over them. Mm -hmm. But he sent Moses right. the simple means with his shepherd's rod. Right. What did he have? He said, what do you have? I have a rod. Mm -hmm. This is all he had. He had a rod. And when he was sent, he did not have a gun. He did not have a, a spear. He had only a rod. And the simple person sent to Pharaoh, to the monarch, to tell Pharaoh, release those people that we are treating here as slaves. The same thing happens in our time. We know, we know who Pharaoh is. Pharaoh are the people leading God's people. Yeah. That's why it says, there came now Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. Joseph means Christ. There came Pharaoh who did not know Christ. There came leaders who did not. We have already been told that the church left Christ in 1882, already in 5217. So there is now Pharaoh who did not know Christ. Now what did God use? Simple means, which is Moses, who used... Simple means, which is a prophet, to plead for the people of God to start keeping feasts. Now, he, let's hear. Mm -hmm. To Pharaoh, mm -hmm. this appeared so simple, to so Pharaoh, small. What did, to, what did Pharaoh see? A headman, somebody who heads cattle, coming to debate with Pharaoh, mm -hmm. to say, release those people. Make sure they go out of Egypt to go and worship God and keep the feast. That's why on the first time when they walked out, the very first thing was for God to give them the syllabus of how he is worshipped. So he gave Moses on Mount Sinai on the third month, Mount Sinai for 40 days, 40 nights, the commandments, statutes, testimonies, everything. So he kept all the followers as soon as they went out. That was the purpose why they were going out. When, we, when they were with Pharaoh, they were not keeping all those things. They had not been given on Mount Sinai. What they were doing, they were, just, they were just with no leader. That's what God has said, no leader. They were not doing God's things. They were just making bricks. That's it. So what are we doing as in law this year? We're just making bricks. Just make bricks and bricks. And God wants us to come into focus with his syllabus. But he's pleading now at this time he's still pleading he's sending moses to plead with pharaoh to release the people to keep it's simple it's a simple thing to keep god's laws it's simple to keep the face the statues a simple thing that god is requiring from pharaoh release those people rewrite that policy and change it to fist rewrite and all these laws are coming for people to receive on their forehead and people are there, their foreheads are empty. They've got no seals. The three seals are going. They are expiring before the people receive them. Now, let's hear. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. 
to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. This appeared so simple, mm -hmm. so small, mm -hmm. that he paid but little so sorry, but little attention to that which was then taking place. Right. Nevertheless, so what does say? Who, who is preaching? Who, who, what is this? A grasshopper telling me to release the people. I want. You remember what happened in, in Egypt? Ten plagues. Consequently, ten plagues for people to be taken out. Then Pharaoh was adamant. Now, this is exactly what is happening. They are adamant. They will tell you so many stories about the Lord's Supper. So many, they don't even give a biblical answer. They give you stories where we had someone who was pious, who observed it in, in this month, and someone who was white, who observed. There is no that said the Lord in the Bible. Nothing. So many stories. That's what Pharaoh's, Pharaoh, Pharaoh will just give one simple word. I don't want. I won't release them. I won't. But this day Pharaoh... Is not saying I won't directly like that. You say, ah, exegesis, skeletological, eh, this, then, that, and that, and floods the people because you know the people are ignorant. They are not reading. It doesn't even tell them to read. But floods the people. He floods them with fables. No, that said the Lord, so that the people continue making bricks. This is what happened with Pharaoh. While he was refusing, the people were making more bricks. Actually, he said the taskmasters now, instead of going to, to take straw, I mean, of, 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 of making bricks, they had the double job to go and take straw. And top of the straw, they, uh, they, they make the bricks. It was doubled. That's what Pharaoh does. Now, listen, let's see, let's hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nevertheless. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. as he saw the living working in his kingdom, mm -hmm. At times he became convinced that he should let Israel go. At but times he... <laughs> it's convincing. Sometimes to Pharaoh say, mm, I think really the feast should be kept. And he tries also to keep the camp meeting. Sometimes the camp meeting starts from Tuesday up to Saturday night. And sometimes he says, let's have eight days. They start also on eight days from Sunday to Sunday. But you find the pharaohs, the, the leaders will just join you halfway in the middle of the week. No, it's not as serious. You know, remember what they said, some of the things were discarded, some of them were half done, some of the, you know, that's far of you. That's far of for you. Some of the things are half done. Right? Because this is what it, the, the type was. The type would not accept the people to keep the feast. Never. Why were they going out? They were going out to be given the syllabus in Mount Sinai and start worshiping God until today. This is what they are doing. Now, uh, read on. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. as he saw the Levin mm -hmm. working in his kingdom, right? at times he became convinced that he should let Israel go. Mm -hmm. But as he viewed Moses' work, mm -hmm. simple as it was, mm -hmm. his heart hardened and he said, Ha! Huh, it cannot be of God. Mm -hmm. I, will let I will not let Israel go. Right. This was repeated. Sometimes he was in two breaths. Sometimes he says, yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's true. Let them go and keep the feast. Let's, let's introduce this. Let's introduce the feast. Sometimes, I know. No, 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 no. I can't be done. I can't. Be, I, I, can't I can't. I can't change. No, 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 no. They won't go. This is what Pharaoh does. Now listen, let's see, let's go. Uh -huh. But as he viewed Moses' work, mm -hmm. simple as it was, mm -hmm. his heart hardened and he said, Ha, huh, it cannot be of God. I will not let Israel go. Right? This was repeated time and time again. Time and again, yes, they can go. No, they can't go. Yes, they can go. No, they can't go. This is what Pharaoh does. You know, best, bestless, no basis at all. Now read on. Uh -huh. Then finally, mm -hmm. the blow came by the death of his firstborn. Right. And finally, there was a great... This slaughter, when it occurs in Ezekiel 9, the children of Israel will be released. Finally, they will be released. And God will just come in. It says in Revelation chapter 12, the earth helped, helped the woman and swallowed all the flood from the dragon's mouth. 
So this is why now the dragon was wrought with the woman because the woman emerged with the 144,000 keeping the feast. That's why they are singing the song of Moses and the Lamb. Why would they sing the song of Moses when <laughs> Moses is the one who has given the feast on Mount Sinai? That's why they are keeping the, 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 the song of, they are singing the song of Moses. Which song of Moses do you know of except the, 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 the ceremonial system which was given and the Ten Commandments which was given on Mount Sinai? Which other do you know the song of Moses and the, and the, and the, and the Lamb? Which one? Which you say, you can say Moses was singing, they were singing the same song of Moses. Which one? Except the one for the feasts. Um, read on this here. Mm -hmm. then, then, finally the blow came by the death of his firstborn. Right. The death of the firstborn. Uh -huh. And there was a great cry throughout the, the land mm -hmm. as Israel went out. Right. But as Pharaoh was not yet convinced mm -hmm. that God had taken the reins in his own hands. Pharaoh still, after the firstborns, was not convinced. Mm. So what is he? He now wants to follow those who are going to keep the feast. Listen to that. He mm -hmm. and his army went to bring them back. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm. God employed the Red Sea as a means to protect his people and as a means to destroy Pharaoh and his army. Right. The Lord will work in no less miraculous a uh, manner now to free his people from being ruled by, our, uh, by a worldly organization. Mm -hmm. He will command the work himself in the same manner as he did in Moses' time mm -hmm. and in David's day. The same manner he did in Moses' time. He will fight for his people. He took the reins. You saw when they left Egypt that there was a pillar of fire at night. A cloud during the day. God now was taking the reins into his hand through Moses, leading this mighty army out, crossing the Red Sea. Whoever dare wants to interpose between God and his and his people will find it will lose out. Do you understand? Now men can men can become just as where just as where the Pharisees mm -hmm. white awake to condemn the greatest teacher that the world ever knew. Mm -hmm. Christ gave unmistakable evidence mm -hmm. that he was sent of God. Right. Yet the Jewish rulers took upon themselves the work the enemy prompted them to do mm -hmm. and charged him who made the Sabbath, who was the Lord of the Sabbath, with being a Sabbath breaker. You see? And? Oh, the foolishness of men. The mm -hmm. weakness of men. This is testimonies to ministers, page 294.2, right? There are those... We are going to 294.3. Uh -huh. There are those to ministers, right? There are those mm -hmm. who are today doing the very same things. Mm -hmm. In their councils, they venture to pronounce judgment upon the work of God. There are those who want to call them... You know, when Christ was healing the, the blind... He was being told he had the spirit of Belial or the spirit of the, of the devil. Mm. Now, there are those who are today doing the very same things, who condemn people who are doing God's work and say they are satanists. They are what? They are what? There are so many people doing the same work which was being done to Christ. In their councils, they venture to pronounce judgment upon the work of God. Are there people who are condemning the work of God? Yes, they are. Read on. Uh -huh. For they have become... For they have become trained in doing that which the Lord has never required them to do. Right. They would better humble their own hearts before God mm -hmm. and keep their hands off the ark of God, right. lest the wrath of God shall break forth upon them. Mm -hmm. For if God has ever spoken by me, I testify that they have undertaken a work in criticizing and pronouncing unsound judgment, which I know is not right. Mm -hmm. They are but finite men, mm. and being befogged themselves, suppose that other men are in error. They are actually themselves that are in error. This is what Sister White said, they are fogged themselves. Mm. And yet they are proclaiming that other people are in error when they are the ones in error. Now, um, let's go to 
to this uh, fourth testimony to me says 294.4 uh -huh. but these men mm -hmm. who presume to judge others should take a little broader view and say suppose the statements of others do not agree with our ideas mm -hmm. shall we for this pronounce them as heresy mm -hmm. shall we uninspired men take the responsibility of placing our stakes and saying this shall not appear in point mm. in print mm -hmm. if they still persist in clinging to their own opinions right. they will find that god will not sustain their action right do they th do they take the position that all they advance is in infallible right that there is not a shadow of an ear sorry of an error or mistake in their productions right so as look how these defensive people are mm. they proclaim as if they have, they are infallible they've got nothing to condemn nothing to say this is wrong everything they do they think it's all right but god is saying there's nobody infallible we should accept corrections now let's go down there just scroll scroll to 4 sc 10.26 one. Moreover, the voice of prophecy. Moreover, mm -hmm. the voice of prophecy declares that the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. Does it declare that in Hosea? Go to the, the Bible, Hosea three verse four to five. Does it declare that the the what was Laodicea doing before the revival and reformation? Was it being led? What when we are in the state of Laodicea? Where we have seen what God is complaining about us. Where we in the state where we were being led. He says, well, we are, they are not feeding my flock. They are not. So what was the flock like? Hosea 3, verse 4 to 5. For the children of Israel mm -hmm. shall abide many, many days, days without a king. We had no king. And without a prince. We had no prince. And without a sacrifice. We had no sacrifice. And without an image. We had no image. And without an effort. We and without no teraphim. We had no leaders. Because God clearly says in Ezekiel 34, we're not being fed. We're not, we, as long as we did not have the, the, the gift of prophecy after Sister White died, we had no leader. We had no terror of him. We had no sacrifice. We had nothing. We were only subject to any prey, anyone who teaches us anything. We had no prophet. Why? Because they are not identifiable. Because they are only ordained by God, without man. So this is why people do not, they deny them. They denied Paul. They denied Peter. That's why they were being beaten five times. But th these were the people who God was using. Now here he says, we stayed long without a king, without a teraphim, without, and then what? Let's try it. <laughs> Afterward. Shall the children of Israel return right. and seek the Lord their God right. and David their king That's and shall fear the Lord? There is a revival and reformation, and God takes the reins into his hand and put the spirit into us in David to the prophet of the hour. This is what he does. After that, then we are under David, under the spirit which was in David. It's now ordained with the prophet of the hour. Now, uh -huh. Um, and and what right? Go back to the quotation for SC ten. That is ancient. Israel. That is mm -hmm. ancient Israel mm -hmm. was to be scattered among, among the nations, nations right? and be a kingdom no more for many days. Mm -hmm. But after the many days, mm -hmm. they are to return and again become a kingdom mm -hmm. and seek the Lord their God and David their king. Right. And therefore, therefore mm -hmm. as we are now living in the time of the returning of the one forty four thousand. So you see, the one forty four thousand will be under the Davidic mm -hmm. or David or the spirit which was in David leading as a prophet. Right? Mm -hmm. the, the 12 tribes, mm -hmm. it is evidently, sorry, it is evident that they will at this time become a kingdom in the hand of the Lord God mm -hmm. instead of being ruled by men through a common worldly organization. Instead of being in a worldly organization which retained back to worldliness, left Christ their leader in mm -hmm. testimonies for the church. Page. Uh, volume 5, page 217. Clearly, they are in the worldly organization. This is what the Spirit of Prophets confirms. Mm -hmm. And then it says, in the days of Moses, 
in the days of Moses right. and in the days of David, mm -hmm. when the Lord had the work in his own hands, mm -hmm. he spoke to the people through Moses and, and through, through David. David. This, is what, this is the organization God wants, the revival and reorganization, where he speaks to one person. He spoke to Moses. He never even came to call and say, you call her, how are you today? Or you, you, whatever. He didn't even meet him. He only called them when they were against Moses. He didn't speak direct to them. He spoke through a dream. But the Moses, God spoke through Moses to the people. Mm -hmm. And also to David. He spoke to David to the people. Now this is why he says in Hosea chapter 3 verse 4 to 5, the people have been all this time without a prophet, without a, a, a teraphim, without an effort, without anything. But afterward, they will return to God under David as one for four thousand. Now here, in, in, read on, in the days of Moses. Mm -hmm. In the days of Moses right. and in the days of David, mm -hmm. when the Lord had the work in his own hands, mm -hmm. he spoke to the people through Moses right. and through David, right. and thus he ruled. Mm -hmm. In the in like manner, right? We, in will, like manner, uh -huh. will he at this time rule the work when he takes the reins in his own hands? He will do like that. Mm -hmm. In this time, when he takes the reins in his hands, he will have a prophet like it was with Moses, like he ruled with David. So it's got it's got two things. I remember Sister White saying a prophet has got two roles. One as a prophet. Two, as a governor. So Sister White called herself, I'm a governor. So as a governor is under the spirit of David. As a prophet is under the spirit of Moses or of Elijah. So you have those two qualities in a prophet. Now in, in prophecy, um, we have done that prophecy. The people over whom the Lord right. Down. The people mm -hmm. over whom the Lord is to take the reins in his own hands mm -hmm. are, of course, only those who shall compose his kingdom. Those who will come up now out of wilderness or out of Egypt or out of uh, Laodicea, those who will come up being led to the Red Sea by God are only those who shall compose his kingdom. So when he goes to establish this kingdom through a prophet of this time who has been busy telling us all these doctrines, everything. He now comes to rule with Moses coming out with all the, the children of God out into the kingdom. Now read on. Uh -huh. and, th and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know him. All the one point four thousand won't teach each other. Mm. They all will be sealed with three seals. They don't need to be taught. The people who need to be taught are not amongst the one point four thousand. The one point four thousand have received the seal. When they walk out now to the kingdom to stand on Mount Zion, no one will teach anyone. They all are fully fed with the message. This is what the devil was all this time trying to bar to make sure there is no 1.4,000 coming from the church. But the 1.4,000, they were there on Mount Zion. On Mount Zion, they were there to show that one way or the other, the stones, they opened their mouth and proclaimed the message which people were, were buying so much people to make sure they block this message. But they will never block it. For the one point four thousand, the very elect will be selected. They will be selected. And God has got ways. Whether you block anything, he will come up with another way. Whether you block anything, he will make sure somehow the message will go to the one point four thousand. Because at last they were standing with Christ on on Mount Zion. All these millions you are talking about, they were not there. The one for four thousand was on Mount Zion. The millions you are talking about is just fantasy. But when we talk about the proper weight, the one for four thousand was standing on Mount Zion. No million there. Now, read one less year. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. the Lord's taking the reins in his own hands mm -hmm. is the beginning of the establishing 
of his everlasting mm -hmm. kingdom. Mm -hmm. Just prior to his visible coming in the clouds, mm -hmm. Daniel also in vision witnessed this fact and declared to the king thus, in the days of, this in the king. Days of these kings mm -hmm. shall the God of heaven set up a, king. a kingdom mm -hmm. which shall never be destroyed, mm -hmm. and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, right. but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Mm -hmm. So, you, you see, in the days of the ten toes, which is our days, the kingdom starts with a revival and reformation. And this kingdom, when it starts, it starts to overtake Laodicea. The church triumphant, we know, that we have the church triumphant, which is just composed of the wheat. It doesn't have any tear. But when we are still coming good, we are Laodicea. You know, we, we are not church triumphant at all. But how do we come about with the church triumphant? The church triumphant is come about by first a revival and reformation. When God takes the reins, we could have left so many examples which we could, we could have spoken of, of how God is going to take the, the reins into his hand. But you for sure now know that it is a revival. Why? Revival from what? Spiritual slumber is done by the prophet. Why? Because in Laodicea, there was no prophet. Since 1915, Sister White died. There was no prophet. And the fact that there was no prophet, it was because they are not ident identifiable. They are only chosen of God. The apostles and the prophets are chosen by God. But we will have, we will see them. We will see their brightness when the revival and reformation, which means reorganization under the, the administration of the Holy Spirit, God leading this army of 144,000, when God has taken the reins for them to receive the kingdom established in Jerusalem, and when the kingdom is established, then a great work follows the 144,000 to collect all the Gentiles into the kingdom. You and I can never miss this important episode where God takes the reins into his hands. Mm. May God bless the new moon, bless the new moon, and bless the third man of Sivan. We meet on Sabbath and on day of Pentecost on Sunday. We will enjoy the presence of God. May God bless you all.